Hello everyone and welcome to Eorzea Armoire, a series about the background of some Hydaelyn's more epic and dense weapons, armor, and artifacts. We'll be investigating the lore of these items both within Final Fantasy XIV and the Final Fantasy franchise in general, as well as the amazing and sometimes obscure real-world people, events, and artifacts upon which they are based. I humbly speak before the sovereign deities, whose praises are fulfilled by the priestesses of the gates. I speak your names, Kusi Iha Matu no Mikoto, Toyo Iha Matu no Mikoto, and fulfilled your praises because you dwell massively embedded like sacred massed rocks in the gates of the four quarters. You open the gates in the morning and close the gates in the evening. If an unfriendly spirit goes from below, you guard below. If it goes from above, you guard above. And guard in the guarding by night and the guarding by day. Therefore, I present the noble offerings of the sovereign grandchild and fulfill your praises. Thus, I speak. There are two clear references that might be construed from the name of Kanagi, the animal weapon for the ninja in Final Fantasy XIV Heavensward. The first is to a Tamil heroine who cursed the city of Madurai to burn after the unjust execution of her husband. But given that the far eastern nation of Doma from which the discipline of ninjutsu hails in Final Fantasy XIV is modelled after traditional Japanese culture, it's safe to assume that the more relevant reference is that which stems from the Japanese concept of Kanagi. This is the Han Chinese character for wizard taken by old Japanese Hyogai Kanji to represent Kanagi or Kamunagi. Kamu meaning God, deity or spirit, and Nagi stemming from the verb Nagu to become calm or quiet. This is the Kanji used more often today for Kanagi or Miko, as contemporary shrine maidens are more often known. Although Kanagi is most commonly translated today into English as Shinto shrine maiden or priestess, as in the passage I read for you a few minutes ago, the original connotations of the old kanji and the role which it symbolizes was something far more akin to a medium, witch, or shaman. To properly understand the traditional roles of the kanagi or kamunagi, we must first have a grasp on Shinto's animism and of the concept of kotodama. Animism is a quality that the Shinto faith shares with polytheism, panentheism, and other shamanistic traditions. It is in essence an extension of substance dualism beyond the human being to other animals, plants, and objects. That is to say, non-human entities also possess a spirit or soul, or as the Greeks might call it, an anima. Trees, rocks, waters, creatures, all possess a spirit, some friendly and some malicious, and it is the role of the Kanagi to act as an intermediary between these spirits and the people that the Kanagi represents and, when necessary, to pacify them. Different kinds of Kanagi are responsible for serving different kinds of deities. For example, the Ohomi Kamunagi leads the worship of the eight spirits that protect the imperial court. The Mikado no Mi Kamunagi serves the spirits that guard the entrances to the imperial palace. Different regional Kanagi commune with various spirits and deities that reside in and represent everything around the local temple. The proper distinction between a Kanagi and a Miko is that the Kanagi represents the imperial court and its interests directly, whereas the Miko work in service to the common peoples. Kotodama, literally word spirit, is the primary means through which a Kanagi reaches out to the spirit. The supposition behind this practice is that spoken words and sounds can have mystical, manipulative, and binding effects on both corporeal and noumenal environments and entities. We might therefore think of the prayers that Kanagi offer to the spirits as utterances of magical spells, and they understandably require a great deal of precision and discipline. It is worth noting here that although the ninja wields the Kanagi daggers, their background might make them seem more appropriate tools for a disciple of magic, particularly for the, the Chondra that negotiates with and communes the will of the elemental spirits of the Twelve's Wood to the people that dwell therein. We have, however, already established that the spirits which the traditional Japanese kanagi serve are analogous to anima, and it is no happy accident that the attendant anima of our weapon takes a form identical 
to this manifestation of an elemental from 1.0. So what does this tell us? Well, the anima of our anima weapon, although it isn't necessarily born in the same way as the elementals, it is certainly the same kind of noumenal creature. Just as the conjurers, and particularly the Pajali, serve as intermediaries for the spirits of the forest, our weapon here serves as a means by which the anima might interact with our physical realm. All anima weapons, then, are kanagi in a very literal sense. The implication of the ninja's weapon being named a kind of Far Eastern synonym for the Pajali might imply that the domains like the Gridanians have a referent relationship with their local elemental spirits, and it might well be that in Doma proper, the ninja serves the same kind of cultural role as the conjurer does in the Twelves Wood. Given that the lore we have already seen of the ninja involves a good deal of mysticism and that the ninja's mudras are literally a sign language form of Kododama, I believe that this is a reasonable and compelling theory, but I would of course love to hear your thoughts and ideas on this topic below. And that's all we have for today. Do once again feel free to leave a comment, like, subscribe and share if you feel like supporting the channel. All of those little things are a really big help. With patch 3.3, we have a whole new evolved form for our arsenal of animal weapons, and with it, a bunch of new concepts worth investigating for the series, so continue to watch this space for new episodes coming soon. But until then, I'm Ethis, and this has been Eorzea Armoire.